Did you ever wonder why a container ship sailing from China to Europe, entering Europe via the Suez Channel, is sailing all along the coast of Europe to end up almost in the north, in Rotterdam, to deliver the goods there that are then transported all over Europe? Isn't that weird? Actually, it happens because the Netherlands is strong in logistic services. For a good reason, because we have a very long history of trading. Basically, it dates back 400 years ago with the VOC, the East Indian Trading Company, and that started the experience. The second thing is that uh, Dutch Customs is very strong in trade facilitation, which means simplifying custom procedures to make life and border crossing as easy and efficient as possible for businesses. However, there is a problem. And the problem can be illustrated with the following example. Netherlands is big in the import of fruits and vegetables. It's basically 12 billion euros a year. And this import from Rotterdam, it's transported into Europe via road transport. Because road transport is very fast and that's good for fruits and vegetables. However, road transport, if you compare that to the other transport modalities, also has disadvantages. If you compare it, the other uh, two modalities are river barges, for instance, or trains. Road transport, compared to the other two, is much more costly. Secondly, it produces much more CO2 pollution. And thirdly, it also creates a lot of traffic congestion. So that's quite some problems. There might be a problem, but there might also be a solution. And the solution, just to give an example, the solution could be what they call the, the modal split. And to give an example, consider a shipment of 30 containers from Latin America to Rotterdam. Containers filled with strawberries and bananas. Actually, when the strawberries arrive in Rotterdam, they need speed because they're very perishable. So preferred mode of transport is to use road transport for that. But the bananas actually, they don't need speed. They can stay a couple of days longer and they can be put on slower modes of transport, like river barges. Pilots have shown, that were conducted in Rotterdam, pilots have shown that if you make this modal split, so you put strawberries on trucks, and you put bananas on river barges, that you could reduce the 95% of road transport to 50%. So that would mean enormous reduction of transport cost, reduction of CO2 pollution, and reduction of traffic congestion. So wouldn't that be nice? Unfortunately, the modal split doesn't work. And why? It doesn't work because of inaccurate data. The data in the supply chain typically are not accurate enough. And this problem comes from the fact that the data is not taken from the party where it originates. To give an example, if you want to know what's in a container, the best party to ask is the producer of the goods. But actually, typically what happens in the, data or in the supply chain is that the data comes from documents of intermediate parties like the container carrier, that is actually the company that transports the container from Latin America to Rotterdam. And it's taken from their documents, but they are experts in transporting containers not to know what's in the container. The second problem is if you have inaccurate data, you have a problem at the border. Because if customs doesn't know what's in a container, they have to inspect it. Although they don't like it, they would prefer not to do it, but they have to. So these two problems, actually, they add up an extra of 500 billion US dollar to the total cost of worldwide trade. That's big money. So you would like to solve that. And what is the solution? The big question is how to get better data from the data is better data from the supply chain. Where to get it? Get it from the source. It sounds easy, but the interesting thing is, now for the first time with IT innovation, it's possible to get the data from the source. And actually, this innovation, a term was coined for that, and it was not a term invented by us, by researchers, but actually by people from the customs administration. So it was in introduced by Frank Heijman of the Dutch Customs, he is somewhere around here. And David Heskett of the UK Customs. They came up with the idea, 
And the idea is based on two, two ideas. The first one is actually that we have to get at the data at the IT systems of the companies, because that's where the data is. If you want to know what's in the container, then you have to go to the company that basically was producing the fruit and putting it in the container. So we will call that Superfruit. This is the company in Latin America. And they should have a LinkedIn page, and this page should enable access to their IT system. And if you get into the IT system, you know exactly what's in the container, whether it's strawberries or bananas, in which container. So that's the first idea. The second idea is that we need to build a worldwide cloud. Basically, all companies, all organizations all over the world, they need this type of LinkedIn pages to get access to the IT systems. And then, for example, Dutch customs from the Rotterdam, they could access via this cloud, they could access the IT system of Superfruit in Latin America and get the precise data what's in the container. That's one application. The other is, for instance, that is the service, the logistic service provider who is typically doing the modal split in Rotterdam. If they want to do that well, they have to know what's in the container in Latin America. So they access that Superfruit LinkedIn page, but they also have to know the data from the river barges, the availability of the river barges, and about the trains. So they have to access various data, and various data sources from various parties. That makes it a bit more complicated. Where it really becomes complicated is actually that if the planning doesn't work, you might have to unload containers. And then complexity goes up, and at the end it becomes mathematically even a very complicated problem. So you need mathematicians to help you out there. And that's all this intelligence should be put in the intelligent dashboards that will be made available for all the parties. It's, the second thing is, it's not just IT, it's also about psychology, about trust. This only works, sharing data among companies only works if they trust each other, if they trust the environment. And trust means that you have a psychological issue, you have sociological issues. So you also need research to solve these kind of issues. This is the kind of research we are doing at the Technical University Delft, jointly with, for instance, the, the National or the Institute of Applied Science, TNO, and even the Center of Mathematics and Computer Science, CWI, and other universities in the Netherlands. It really requires a lot of mathematical, even mathematical, computer science, and even sociology and psychology. Does it really work? That's the next question. Looks nice, worldwide cloud, but does it ever work? Well, interestingly, we did some pilots. For example, we had an EU project, IT8, where we built a kind of very small prototype version of this data pipeline, very simple. We did it with Heineken, IBM, and Dutch Customs, and lo and behold, it worked. So that was the first proof. Now we are in a much larger project called Cassandra, also EU-funded, and we are building much more ambitious pilots between Europe, China, United States, Africa, to validate the concept and to see how we can roll it out. And that's the key issue. The key issue about this innovation is it's not only intellectually challenging, but the key issue is also that the data pipeline only works if others join. So we really have to make, it doesn't make sense to have all this IT innovation only in Rotterdam. We have to disseminate it all over the world. And for that, we need international collaboration. We collaborate with experts, for instance, of the European Commission. We collaborate with experts from the United Nations, in particular the Trade Division in Geneva, just to spread the word and to spread the innovation. So, this is all about virtual trade. It's about open trade, sharing data with each other, and international collaboration. This is the vision of the VOC 2.0. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.